All right, so this is going to be 2.6 rational functions for the Ask School homework on Monday, Tuesday. It's page 175, 17 to 41 odds. This will be due uh, Wednesday, Thursday when you get back. We are going to have a test on the next Monday, Tuesday, which in, which will be 11-2, 11-3, depending on what cohort, cohort group you're with. So I'm going to go through and do some of these problems. Now, you're going to want to go on Canvas, and on Monday, go to the far right one. You need to watch the video for at home first because it's got some information we need for the homework today, and it's only a five-minute video, so it won't take long to watch. So going up here, we are supposed to uh, state the domain of the function, identify all the intercepts. That's x and y intercepts. We've done that since the first first day, and then we're going to do vertical and horizontal asymptotes, which we did on the first page, the at-home stuff, and I'm going to do that first. I'm going to do C first, and then we're supposed to graph a sketch of this thing. So I'm going to do number 22 and 34 on this. So I am first going to do vertical asymptotes, which is part of C. So vertical asymptotes occur where the denominator equals zero. So if I add X over, there's a vertical asymptote at X equals one. Horizontal asymptotes is where I look for the largest exponent. Well, there's a one here and a one here, and they're equal. So when they're equal, it's going to be y equals the coefficients of those x's. So that's negative three over negative one, which is positive three. So I'm going to start making my graph over here. So there's y, there's x, and I probably should have put it down lower. I know there's a vertical asymptote at one. So here's one, and I need to have a dashed line going up and down at one. The graph cannot touch the one. And then there's a horizontal asymptote at three. So I'm going to go up to three, and I'm going to draw a dashed line going across at three. Now this graph is going to approach the three way out here at infinity and way out there at negative infinity, it's going to approach three. It can sometimes cross a horizontal in here near the origin, but we're going to worry about that more later. I'm going to find now the x-intercept, the x-intercepts, just like I did way back when. So I'm going to let y equal zero. So when I come and plug zero in over here, I get one minus three x all over one minus x, and I multiply this over there times zero. So that goes away. I add my 3x over. So my x-intercept is at one-third. So one-third is going to be in here somewhere. It's going to cross there. Now, because of my asymptotes, that's good enough to graph this because I know it's going to be approaching that thing, and it's never going to cross that vertical. It's going to get closer and closer to the vertical but not cross it. So there's half the graph. Uh, I'm going to get my y-intercept now by plugging zero in for x. So when I come up here, I'm going to plug a zero and a zero. So y is going to equal one minus zero over one minus zero, which is one over one or one. So that means this graph, now that, that tells me my graph is off a little bit, so I'm going to make it better. It's got to cross, oh, no, I was right. It does cross at one. That is one right there. So it actually, I did have it right. I didn't need to erase that. Now I need to, uh, I just identified my intercepts, the y-intercepts one, the x-intercepts one-third, and the domain. So the domain are the x values. Well, the only value that x can't hit is a vertical asymptote. So what that means is it goes this way forever and comes back. So it starts at negative infinity and it goes all the way to one, but it can't hit one. And it's going to jump over the one and start on the other side of one and go to infinity. Now the range here is going to hit everything except the three because it's not crossing in here. I can tell by the way this looks, it's not gonna cross. So it goes from negative infinity up to the three, the y value of three where the horizontal asymptote is, and that's gonna have a union of three to infinity. Now the last thing I gotta do is graph numbers over here. I gotta put in some numbers two and three in here for my axis, so I'm gonna make a little t-chart, and I'm just going to put 2 and 3 in. So if I put 2 in up here, that's going to be 1 minus 6 
all over one minus two. So that's gonna be negative five over negative one, so this is five. So at two, I am up here at five. And in actuality, I already know that graph's gonna be going up, it can't cross that line, and it's gonna be coming down like that, so that's really enough, but I'm gonna go ahead and put three in there, so that'd be one minus nine, which is negative eight on top, and one minus three, which is negative two on top, so that's gonna be four. So if you look here, three should hit right here at four. So that should be the order pair three, four right there. All right, coming over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna do vertical asymptote first. So the vertical asymptote occurs where the denominator is zero. So when I factor this, I'm gonna get x minus two and x minus one. So this has two vertical asymptotes. One where x equals two and one where x equals one. Those are my vertical asymptotes. There's two. Horizontal asymptote. So I look at my biggest exponent. Two and two is equal. Their coefficients are one over one. So this is y equals one. So I'm gonna start grabbing that one. Now I'm gonna spread these out a little bit because one and two are vertical asymptotes. Now I have two of these. So I was drawing a straighter line, but I'm not. You're, this should be straight up and down vertically. So there's gonna be three parts. There's a part on the left side, a part in the middle, and a part on the right. And I'm also gonna do my horizontal asymptote with one. So there's a horizontal asymptote coming through here. Okay, so there's my horizontal and vertical, and then I'm gonna get my x-intercepts the same way I always have. I'm going to set zero in for the y and set this thing equal to zero and I'm going to take this bottom part and multiply it over just like I did the last one over to zero so when I do that's zero times that is still zero so the bottom part's gone and then this is a difference of squares which factors to x plus two and x minus two so this has two x-intercepts there's an x-intercept at negative two and an x-intercept at two Okay, we have a problem. There's something I did not check. I did not factor first. So we actually do not have an asymptote here. Okay, that two and that asymptote told me I was wrong. So what I should have done is factor this whole thing first. So I'm gonna take this, the factor of x squared, x squared minus four squared, which I did down there below and put it on top. And on the bottom, if I factor this thing, I got x minus two. That's factoring this thing up here and x minus one. So these x minus twos reduce. So what that means is instead of an asymptote, that means there is something called a hole at x minus two equals zero, which is x equals two. So this is not actually an asymptote, it is a hole. So what that means is since I got the x-intercept is two here, that means there's actually a hole here. So that's an open circle. It does not equal that. So this is not actually, that is not actually a, a, an x-intercept because it's a hole. Now I do have over here at negative two, I do have a crossing the x-axis. Now because of my vertical asymptote and my horizontal asymptote, I already know this thing is going to go something like this. But I'm gonna come back up here and get my y-intercept now. So to get your y-intercept, we're gonna plug zeros in for all of the x's. So anything's got an x with it, it'll be a zero. So this is just gonna be negative, gonna be y equals, and then that zero minus four is negative four on top. And that's zero minus zero plus two, that's two on the bottom. So my y-intercept is negative two. So in other words, right here where that, that intersects the y-axis is negative two. Now, because I have this hole here, I think this graph is probably gonna go like this. But a minute again, I'm gonna tell you that sometimes we can cross, it can cross in here. So I'm gonna stick, make a t-chart, and I'm gonna try 1.5 in here and see what that gets me. And I'm gonna do it on my calculator. 
So again, I'm going up there to 34 and I'm going to take alpha y equals 1 on my calculator and I'm going to type in there 1.5 squared minus 4. And then in the denominator, I'm going to type in 1.5 squared minus 3. times 1.5 uh, plus 2. And that gives me 7. So at 1.5, at 1.5 right in here somewhere, this graph is way up here at 7. So this graph is right here. So that means this graph is going to cross this thing. So what that tells me is this graph is coming down here and it's going to hit here. And this thing goes up. And then again, I told you, as you go to the right, the graph approaches the one. So this graph is going to come and start coming back up this way and approaching that one value. Okay, so when I typed in 1.5, I got out seven for Y. And if you want, you could type in three and see what you're gonna get out of this thing. So three squared minus four, three squared minus four is nine minus four is five on top. 3 squared is 9, 9 and 2 is 11, and then 11 minus uh, 6 is 5, so this would be 5. So if you notice, we're going to have to change that up. We're gonna, we got to put, I got to put, let's see, if I put 2 in here, I get 0, don't I? Do I get 0 down here? Let's see, that's 4, 6, yeah, I get 0 there. So do you remember when we reduced this thing on the top, we had X plus two and on the bottom we had X minus one was left. So I have screwed up in the fact that I don't even think this thing's gonna hit down there too. It's gonna be above the whole time. Because when I put in three, I got five, so it was up here. So if I put in, uh, let's put in two, you get four over one is four. So. At two, it's at four. So let's see, vertical asymptote. Oh, where is it? So this is not a vertical asymptote. There's just this one at one. So let's see, 1.5 gave me seven. I think I made a math mistake. Let's plug three in here. Three and two is five, and three minus two is two, so that's two and a half. So at three, we're at two and a half, so that's gonna be in here somewhere. And at two, we were at four, so that's in here somewhere. So this graph actually goes like this. All right, so that's those two problems. I'm gonna do one more, and we're gonna call it a day. So we're supposed to match up down here. So what I do on a problem like this, I'm going to do 42. I know that x plus 2 cannot equal 0 because there's a vertical asymptote, but x equals negative 2. So if I look at these, there's a vertical asymptote here and a vertical asymptote here, so I'm not really sure which one of these two this is. But if I look at this one, I can tell that they've got this marked as a horizontal asymptote because these are approaching 0. So if I look at the horizontal asymptote here, this is an x cubed on the top. And if you have an x, this is an x squared on the bottom, so the top is bigger than the bottom, which means there is no horizontal asymptote. So this one has a horizontal asymptote, this one doesn't, so this answer is B. So see if you can use those asymptotes to help you find the answers to these last problems. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Thank you.